Canto seventy six to seventy eight of Book two of the Ramayana of Balmiki, translated by Ralph D. H. Griffith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by O one two three. Canto seventy six The Funeral. The Saint Vasista, best of all, whose words with moving wisdom fall, Varat Kaike's son addressed whom burning fires of grief distressed o prince whose fame is widely spread enough of grief be comforted the time is come arise and lay upon the pyre the monarch's clay he heard the words basista spoke and slumbering resolution woke then skilled in all the laws declare he bade his friends their rites prepare they raised the body from the oil and placed it dripping on the soil, then laid it on a bed whereon wrought gold and precious jewels shone. There, pallor over his features spread, the monarch as in sleep lay dead. Then Varat sought his father's side, and lifted up his voice and cried, O king, and has thy heart designed to part and leave thy son behind? Make Rama flee, who loves the right, and Lakshman of the arm of might. Why, dear great monarch, wilt thou go, and leave this people in their war? Mourning their hero, wild at grief, of Rama reft their lion chief. Ah, who will guard the people well, who in Ayodhya city dwell? When thou, my sire, hast sought the sky, and Rama has been forced to fly. In widowed war, bereft of thee, the land no more is fair to see. The city, to my aching sight, is gloomy as a moonless night. Thus with overwhelming sorrow pained, said Bharat by the bed complained, and thus Vasista, holy sage, spoke his deep anguish to assuage. O Lord of man, no longer stay, the last remaining duties pay. Haste, mighty armed, as I advise, the funeral rites to solemnize. And Bharat heard Vasista's read, with due attention and agreed. He summoned straight from every side, chaplain and priest and holy guide. The sacred fires he bade them bring, forth from the chapel of the king, wherein the priests in order deal, and ministers the offerings trio. Distraught in mind, with sob and tear, they laid the body on a bier, and servants, while their eyes brimmed over, the monarch from the palace bore. Another band of mourners led the long procession of the dead, rich garments in the way they cast, and gold and silver as they passed. Then other hands the course bedewed, with fragment juices that exude, from sandal, cedar, aloe, pine, and every perfume rare and fine. Then priestly hands the mighty dead upon the pyre deposited, the sacred fires they tended next, and muttered low each funeral text. And priestly singers who rehearse, the summons sang their holy verse. Forth from the town in leaders came, or chariots many a royal dame, and honoured so the funeral ground, which aged followers ringed around. With steps in inverse order bent, the priests in sad procession went, around the monarch's burning pyre, who well had nursed each sacred fire, which Queen Kaushalya and the rest, their tender hearts with war distressed. The voice of women, shrill and clear, as screaming Kalios smote the ear, as from a thousand voices rose the shriek that tells of woman's woes. Then, weeping, faint, with loud lament, down Sariu's shelving bank they went. There, standing on the riverside, with Bharat, priest and peer, their lips the women purified with water fresh and clear. Returning to the royal town, their eyes with tear-drops filled, ten days and art they laid them down, and wept till grief was healed. Canto 77 The Gathering of the Ashes The tenth day passed, the prince again, was free from every legal stain. He bade them on the twelfth the great remaining honour celebrate. Much gold he gave, and gems and food, to all the Brahman multitude and goats, whose hair was white and fine, and many a thousand head of kine. Slaves, men, and damsels he bestowed, and many a car and fair abode. Such gifts he gave the Brahman race, 
his father's obsequious to grace. Then, when the morning's earliest ray appeared upon the tardant day, again the hero wept and sighed, distraught and sorrow stupefied. Drew, sobbing in his anguish, near, the last remaining depth to clear, and at the bottom of the pyre he thus bespake his royal sire. O oh, father, hast thou left me so, deserted in my friendless war, when he to whom the charge was given, to keep me to the wood is driven. Her only son is forced away, who was his helpless mother's stay. Ah, why dear father, art thou fled, leaving the queen uncomforted? He looked upon the pile where lay, the bones half burnt and ashes grey, and uttering a piteous moan, gave away, by anguish overthrown. Then his tears began to well, prostrate to art the hero fell. So from its seat the staff they drag, and cast to art some glorious flag. The ministers approached again, the prince whom rights had freed from stain. So when Jajati fell, each seer, in pity for his fate, drew near. Satrugna saw him lying low, overwhelmed beneath the crush of war, and as upon the king he taught, he fell upon the art distraught. One to his loving memory came, those noble gifts, that kingly frame, he sorrowed by his war distressed, as one by frenzied rays purchased. Ah me, this surging sea of war has drowned us with its overflow. The source is mantra, dire and dark, Kaike is the ravening shark, and the great bones the monarch gave, land conquering might to every wave. Ah, why thou wilt thou go and leave, thy burrowed in his war to grieve? Whomever it was thy greatest joy, to fondle as a tender boy. Didst thou not give, with thoughtful care, our food, our drink, our robes to wear? Whose love will now for us provide, when thou, our king and sire, hast died? At such a time bereft, forlorn, why is not art in sunder torn? Missing her monarch's palm control, his love of right, his lofty soul. Ah me, for ah my roams afar, my sire is where the blessed are. How can I live deserted? I will pass into the fire and die. Abundant does, I will not brook, up in Ayodhya's town to look. Once guarded by Ikshaku's rays, the wood shall be my dwelling place. Then, when the prince's mournful train, heard the sad brothers does complain, and saw their misery at the view, their grief burst wilder out and near. Faint with lamenting, sad and worn, eats like a bull with broken horn. The brothers, in their wild despair, lay rolling mad with misery there. Then old Basista, good and true, their father's priest, all low who knew, raised weeping word on his feet, and thus bespake with counsel meet. Twelve days, my lord, have passed away, since flames consumed thy father's clay. Delay no more, as rules ordain. Gather what bones may yet remain. Three constant pairs are ever found, To hem all mortal creatures round. Then mourn not thus, O prince, for none, Their close companionship may shun. Sumantra bade Satrugna rise, And soothed his soul with counsel wise, And skilled in truth, he is here a thought, How all things are, and come to naught, When rose its hero from the ground, A lion lord of man renowned. He showed like in rose flag, whereon fierce rains have dashed and suns have shone. They wiped their red and weeping eyes, and gently made their sad replies. Then ours to haste, the royal pair, performed the rites that claimed their care. Canto 78 Mantra Punished Satrugna does to Bharat spake, who long the forest road to take. He who in war was wont to give Strength to himself and all that live, Dear Rama, true and pure in heart, Is banished by a woman's art. Yet here was Lakshman, brave and strong, Could not his might prevent the wrong? Could not his arm the king restrain, Or make the banished free again? One loving right and fearing crime Had checked the monarch's sin in time. One vessel of a woman's will, His feet approached the path of ill. While Lakshman's younger brother, dread, Satrugna, thus to Bharat said, Came to the fronting door, arrayed, In glittering robes, the humpback maid. 
there she with sandal oil be smeared in garments meet for queens appeared and lassa to her form was lent by many a gem and ornament she girdled with her broidered joan and many a chain about her throne showed like a female monkey round whose body many a string is bound when on that cause of evil fell the quick eye of the sentinel he grasped her in his ruthless hold and hastening in said rugna told here is the wicked past he cried through whom the king thy father died and drama wanders in the wood do with her as thou deemest good the warder spoke and every word said rugna's breast to fury steered he called the servants all and each and spake in wrath his hasty speech this is the wretch my sire who slew and misery on my brother's trio let her this day obtain the meed vile sinner of her cruel deed he spake and moved by fury laid his mighty hand upon the maid who as her fellows ringed her round made with her cries the hall resound soon as the gathered women viewed satrugna in his angry mood their hearts disturbed by sudden dread they turned and from his presence fled his rays they cried on us will fall and ruthless he will slay us all come to kaushalya let us flee our hope our seal defence is she approved by all of virtuous mind compassionate and good and kind his eyes with a burning wrath aglow satrugna shatterer of the foe dragged on the ground the humpback maid who shrieked aloud and screamed for aid this way and that with no remorse he dragged her with resistless force and chains and glittering trinkets burst lay here and dear which jams dispersed till like the sky of autumn shone the palace flow they sparkled on the lord of man supremely strong held in his rage the rats along where queen kaike dwelt he came and sternly then addressed the dame deep in her heart kaike felt the steps his keen reproaches dealt and of satrugna's ire afraid the varad flew and cried for aid he looked and saw the prince inflamed with burning rage and thus exclaimed forgive thine angry arm restrain a woman never may be slain my hand kaike's blood would spill the sina ever bent on ill but rama long in duty tried would hate the impious matricide and if he knew thy vengeful blade had slaughtered even this humpback maid never again be sure would he speak friendly word to thee or me when for its speech such rugna heard he calmed the raise his breast that steered releasing from her dire constraint the trembling wretch with terror faint then to kaike's feet she crept and prostrate in her misery wept kaike on the humpback gazed and saw her weep and gasp still quivering with her senses dazed from fear such rugna's grasp with gentle words of pity she assuaged her wild despair even as a tender hand might free a kali from the snare. And of Canto seventy six, seventy seven, and seventy eight.